How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this really cool render here. We're gonna do some really cool magnifying glass stuff, some fun bokeh and figuring out how to do this just really weird structure. If you do want to get the project file for this render, it's available in the description for a dollar. If you're on Patreon, you'll be getting that on all three tiers. If you're unaware of the Patreon, I have exclusive tutorials. I release 10 procedural materials a month. Last month, I released the paint materials. I have iridescence, I have tiles, I have wood. All that fun stuff is on the Patreon. I also just started doing frequent live streams and every time I finish the live stream it is posted for the guys on patreon so if you want to see the re-uploaded streams you can catch those on the patreon with tier 2 and tier 3 that being said let's get into how to make this really cool thing all right, so we're gonna open up a clean slate here. I'm going to be using cycles for this. You can use EV. It will look slightly different, specifically when we get into glass. But outside of that, you should be able to do this render just fine. So let's go ahead and get an, an icosphere and make that first little weird shape. So let's get an icosphere. I'm gonna hit tab, right click, subdivide. And on subdivide, I'm gonna go to smoothness of one and number of cuts at 10. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop on over here to wireframe mode. I'm gonna go to the modifiers and I'm gonna get in the decimate modifier, set it to planar and bring up that angle limit. And then we'll go out of wireframe mode and we can see what we're doing here. Let's go ahead and get a smoothing modifier and you'll see what that does when we play with the repeat. You'd see it just does what it sounds like. It smooths out everything. I'm gonna bring that angle limits up some more. Something like this, that's always editable. What's really cool about this whole system is nothing is applied so you can always go back and change things. It's fully procedural within our modifiers. Next, let's go ahead and get in a edge split. That edge split is gonna work once we add in another um, smooth modifier, so let's get that. And then we bring up that repeat again, it's gonna bring those guys up like that. I'm gonna bring it to maybe 60 on the repeat. And then we have these floating little weird circles. We'll give it maybe 70, bring those guys in. So now we have this, we can bring that, um, that decimate back a little bit more to add some more or take away some more again all fully procedural here now let's go ahead and get in a uh, solidify going to give you some thickness which is really really cool so bring that in a little bit to whatever you like and then let's get in a bevel modifier set it here to angle and set it to width and then we'll bring up that segment count up a little bit and then you can play with the play with the width if you'd like and then right click shade smooth and now you have that object. Now let's shift A, get in another icosphere. I'm gonna right click and subdivide and bring those number of cuts to 10, shade smooth, and we'll bring it in. So he's just like that, making sure he's not intersecting with anything like that. So we'll bring it up a little bit and he should be good. Now we have our weird little object. Shift A, I'm gonna go ahead and get a plane scaled up pretty big, shift and then control A, apply scale. So that'll be good. We need to do that for when we add in our materials. I'm gonna click this guy, hold down shift, click that guy, and we'll just bring them up so that they're just like this. Now let's go ahead and make sure we're in the cycles render engine here. And I'm gonna go to the rendered view and we're gonna add in some lights. So let's shift A, we'll add in an area light here, bring it up to pretty high up. And then we're gonna go and um, bring that power pretty high. And then I'm going to sh bring him, scale it up pretty big. I'm going to duplicate and then bring it over here and then bring it somewhere over here. I'm gonna hit R twice to point him where I want. I'm gonna hit G to kind of bring it down, R twice again. Just get it pointing the direction I want. Again, my camera's gonna be positioned in this general vicinity. I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy again and then R, just point it over where I want it to be just by hitting R twice. And then we'll scale this guy down. And so this is pretty much the lighting setup we're gonna be using here for this animation, just like that. Now, if you're wondering why am I not using viewport, viewport denoising, not a big fan of it. I'm also not using that version of Blender, but again, I think it kind of looks muddy and I can kind of see what's going on here with the noise. So let's go ahead and start getting our camera set up. So shift A, get my camera, control alt zero, snap it to view. And then I'm gonna get my focal length to be about 80. And then I'm going to just uh, bring my camera down a little bit. I'm gonna go out of render view and then we'll just bring it up, bring it down something like this. Looks really cool, I like that. All right, so now we're ready to start adding some really fun stuff to this. So let's go and make that really cool glass material. Let's hop over to shading and we'll go to rendering here and we'll start getting those materials going. So click new, 
So click new here, and then we're gonna immediately make this here transmission, and then bring your roughness down to zero. So now we have some pretty cool looking glass. Let's go ahead and bring this over and we'll get a mix shader. And what we're gonna do is uh, bring that up here, get an emission node, EM, bring that here, and I'm gonna make this kind of orange that I'm looking for. So now we're already getting some glowing going on. Let's get a color ramp here. So we can crunch what we're gonna go behind this, and which is a um, layer weight, so L-A-Y, layer weight node, and now we're gonna see the magic happen. So let's go ahead and bring that blend down. And so when we bring the blend in, depending on where you're going, you might have to slide it this direction or that direction. We'll bring up the strength, I'll bring up my strength to 50, and then now bring that blend. And so you can see, in the when we see in the front, we're just seeing this, and then in the back, we're seeing that. Let's go ahead and make this ground plane um, metallic. If you haven't already clicked the new button, click new, and then make it metallic, and we'll make it kind of gray here, mid dark, and we'll do the same thing in this middle one, make it metallic, and now we're gonna have some fun here with this ball. So let's go ahead and get a bump node here, bump, and we'll plug the bump node into the normal so that we can add in. So we're gonna get a really cool node combination. I've done quite a bit, so let's go ahead and get a Voronoi texture. Get this Voronoi right here. We're gonna switch this from F1 to smooth F1, and we'll keep it all here. Plug the distance into the height, and then we're gonna get in a Musgrave. Musgrave texture, plug the factor into the vector. And so now we have this, and then if you wanna bring that scale down, I'm hopping over here to um, material preview. Bring that scale down, makes this bigger, or smaller. I'm gonna, I like it right about here. Gives you a nice scale and a nice really cool swirl pattern. What I don't like is how the roughness is pretty much even throughout. So let's go ahead and play around with that. Let's first get a color ramp so we can crunch what's gonna go behind it. And that's gonna be a Musgrave. For me, the Musgrave material node is the, um, the best one for ru rust or, you know, weathering kind of thing. So we're gonna bring here on the Musgrave, the dimension down, detail up. So now we already get this, but I don't like how this is practically a mirror, very reflective. We're gonna take the black portion of the color ramp and bring it up closer. So now you get a better interaction, a better looking rust, not really rust, but better weathered metal. So now you can see this happening. We can bring that a little, little darker so you can see it happening better within the metal. And we're gonna make the metal itself kind of a mid kind of gray here. So now we have this really cool material going on. On the ground, however, we, we're gonna make something kind of similar to that, but we're gonna do a little bit different. So we're gonna get a bump node, plug the bump into the normal, and we're gonna get a magic texture. So M-A-G, magic texture, plug the color into the height. And now we get this really cool thing. I'm gonna go ahead and sw switch on over to material preview so we don't have to look at all that craziness. So bring your distortion up like that so you get these really weird bubble action and bring your scale down. And what you're gonna get is this really cool swirly action. If you bring the depth up, you get more detail in the lines, but I'm gonna bring it to right about here and then pr play with my distortion some more, something like this. And then bring my scale, play with the scale, tell you like, um, you know, what, what you're seeing, what you're dealing with, all preference, all up to you. And if we hop on over to rendered view, now we get this whole situation. Looks really cool, but it's just not that great looking. What's it missing? Well, first off, let's add, let's click on the ball here and we're gonna hover over that. Control C, we'll click on the ground plane, control V, and we're just pasting in this node setup and plug that into the roughness. So now we get some uh, fun stuff happening, except what we're gonna do here is take this gray part and bring it all the way to black. And what that's gonna do is get us some really interesting, really cool reflections here. And I'm gonna bring the scale down to one, actually uh, 0 0.2 on the scale here for the ground. So we get more interesting things happening here on this ground plane. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some atmospheric sort of effects here. And to me, I just don't entirely like the way this is looking. It looks bland, it looks boring. So I wanna, it just feels like it's missing something. So I'm gonna get a cube and I'm gonna scale it up all the way till it passes up my camera, control A and apply the scale. I'm gonna hop on over to shading. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click new, delete the principled, get in a volume node. So V-O-L in the search and principled volume, 
plug the volume into the volume here and give your density 0.05 on the density. And so now we're getting some atmospheric effects. I'm gonna to go to my, my, uh, my lights here and give them all just a slight hint of blue and that's gonna really um, make your scene look a little bit better and better color playing around here. So now we have this really nice view, this really nice effect with your scene. Now, if you look at my render, you'll see we have these, these little bokeh, these little light things going on. How do you do that? Well, let's, that's what we're gonna do next. So what I'm gonna do, first off, you can see how this box is in the way, it's kinda hard to navigate your scene with it in the way. Click on this little yellow icon, go to viewport display, and switch from textured to wire, that'll keep it out of the view um, while you can work. So I'm gonna get in a plane, and I'm gonna hit G to move it tw toward my camera. I'm gonna hit R, I'm gonna hit R twice to try to position him right here in front of my camera, just hitting R twice. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a simple little particle system that is gonna make all these little particles in front of this guy so that when the camera is focused on here, it'll make those guys out of focus and make that nice real camera effect that will give a little bit more photorealism to your scene. First, we need to make that object, so I'm gonna get an icosphere, my favorite object, They're fun to play with, and I like the topology. I'm gonna hit G and move him over here, and then I'm gonna to go to Material Preview, give it a quick material right here on the emission, make it orange like the other one, and I'm gonna keep it at a strength of one for now. I might pop that up later. Here on the plane, one thing I wanna do is hit Tab and subdivide it, uh, give it number of cuts at maybe 20. So that's really important because we're gonna be displacing it in a second. Take this plane here, and we're gonna add in a particle system. So right here's the particle systems. Click that, click hair. On render, go from path to object, and then you can go ahead and select that object with the little eyedrop tool, and now you have all your guys. Bring that scale randomness all the way in, and I'm gonna hit shift and bring that um, scale down, so it's 0 0.05 maybe, 0 0.005, sorry. So let's see how that looks. These are really big, so 0 0.0005. That looks about right. So just play around with your objects. So just play around with your particles till you like the scale of them. Now I'm just gonna make quickly make this um, plane disappear, so we're gonna go ahead and just add in a wireframe bring that thickness down to zero. And now our particles are here. I don't like how many there are, so we can go back to the, um, the particle system and bring down those, that number. And then we'll see how that looks here in the render. So the particles are certainly not bright enough. So we'll go to the icosphere material and then bring the strength up to like 10 maybe. So we'll bring that strength to like something, say like 30, like that. And then I'm gonna bring up my particle size just by a little bit. All right, so I like the particles. What I don't like is how they're all in the same place. They're all just in a flat position in front of my camera, and that just doesn't make the out of focus, what's called a bokeh, so that does, it does not make the bokeh look that good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take away that uh, wireframe for now and add in a, de a displace, and then we'll bring the displace above the particle system so it keeps it on the plane. New, we'll click that. We're gonna go to clouds, and then we'll bring, um, we'll keep that just like it is, and then we'll go ahead and bring up the strength of it, and then we'll bring that wireframe back just to make this guy disappear. And what that's doing is I'm gonna actually make that displace a little bit more extreme. It places those particles farther away so we get different scales in the out of focus look, and that's really gonna make it more dynamic. So let's go ahead and get that, out, that depth of field going. All right, so to get the camera to focus on something, you could do it manually, or you can get a um, empty, which I'm gonna be using a plane axis, I'm gonna hit G, and you can tell it precisely where to be focused. So I'm gonna focus it right there, and then what we'll do is we'll go to our camera here, click on the camera, click on the little green camera icon, turn on depth of field on our focus object, we're just gonna click that empty, and then we're gonna go here to rendered view, and now you can see our objects are already giving us that nice out of focus look, We'll bring our blades all the way up to 16 and we'll give our f-stop at two and that'll give us a perfect nice bokeh. It looks very warm and gives a nice effect. One thing you can do if you don't like where these, um, you know, these particles are positioned, we'll click on the particles here, 
go to the particle system and click on seed and that'll move them around. And what's nice is you can actually animate that if you want. It's very jumpy. There's better ways to animate it, but it's an idea if you want to play with it. I'm going to bring a number down on the particles. We'll go back to the view and see how it's looking. So I'm going to render this really quick and we'll hop on over to compositing and really finalize this look. So for your render samples, I'm going to pop it up at 300. I'm not sure if that's what I want, but I'm going to keep it there for now. And then now we'll go to render, render image, and uh, we'll let that render and then we'll come back to composite it. All right, so now that it's finished rendering, you see it's kind of noisy, but we'll denoise it in a little bit. So I'm going to hop on over to compositing, hit use nodes, shift A and get a viewer node. So click that and bring the image to the image. Now before we start adding nodes here, I'm going to show you a really quick trick. If you hold shift and right click and do this, now you can just plug the nodes into one thing if you hit G to move it. Now you can just plug stuff right in there and it goes to the composite and the viewer and that's super important. I'm going to go to view, click fit, shift A and I'm going to go to a glare node here. Pop that right there, get all this craziness. I'm going to go from streaks to fog glow and I'm going to bring down that mix to make the glow a little bit more subtle. I'm going to make it from medium to a high quality here. And then now we have a nice subtle glow. If I just hit M, it kind of brings that away and I'll hit M back. You can see how it affects the scene. It's very subtle, but it really helps it out. One more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a lens distortion note. So L E click on the lens distortion and click on dispersion. And that's going to mess with this stuff over here. It's a little bit too much. So I'm going to go 0.05 here on it just to make it a little less extreme, but gives you that nice thing. And I also want to zoom my camera out just a little bit. So I'm going to do that really quick. I'm going to hit a G middle click, zoom it out some, and then that's kind of what I want to do for my composition. So now we have this really cool, really nice scene. Now I forgot to do one thing and that's that really cool mirror effect. I'm going to uh, hide the cube just so our, we have better viewport, uh, less noise. I'm going to click on the icosphere right here. Go back to shading and how do we make it look like that magnifying glass? So to get that zoom in, that really cool zoom in effect, first off I'm going to bring that base color all the way to pure white so we can see through it perfectly. You want to bring that IOR to a much higher value. So if you bring that IOR up you can start see, you can start to see that really cool magnifying effect happening. It's kind of subtle, it's hard to see with all this noise but if you bring it up too much It'll, you can see now it's really, really brought up. Um, it's hard to see with all the noise. But you can see it happening. So I'm going to say the magnifying glass effect happens really well at 3.45 for me. And that's how you get that effect. If I just bring down, hide that plane here. If we hide the particle plane, you can see it better. And I would reposition my lights to be a little bit um, to, to, to complement this glass a little bit more. So that's how you do the glass. Um, for this particular setup with my lights, it doesn't look that great. So I'm going to get 1.45, but depending on where your lights are set up, it can actually look really cool like in um, my piece. The lights were more perfected. I kind of placed them quickly here in my uh, tutorial, but if you really optimize it, you really play with your design, you can have it really pop like that. The only issue is with this blackness right here. I don't know how to fix that. If you're okay with it, I was fine with it. You can really have that nice magnifying glass effect. I'm going to leave it out for this particular recording. We'll bring that cube back in. And uh, yeah, it looks like we're about ready. What I'm going to do here, the last thing, is bring that denoising data in so we can denoise our scene. Head over to compositing. I'm going to get in a denoise. So right here, pop that there, and then we need to change some stuff. So noisy image, noisy normal, and then noisy albedo. And now where that's all done, I'm going to go over here to my render samples and give it 800 samples. That's a lot. My computer can handle that. You can bring it down to 500 if you want, and the denoising will do a lot of the work for you. And now let's render this and see how the final result looks. All right, so this is my final result here. It's a little bit messy. I would actually go in and optimize everything here and improve the composition. Again, if you are a part of the Patreon, you can watch the uh, live stream that I did to make this exact composition here. It took a while, so again, after watching my tutorial, you can go in and perfect the composition, perfect the lighting, really get it to where you think it looks the best. So that's how you make this really cool design. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned some stuff, and thank you for watching.